All right. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a great pleasure to share my journey here, how Databricks later has transitioned the Coinbase data architecture. So let me begin to explain how Coinbase combined three types of data together to power the business model. As a fintech company, Coinbase has 24 by 7 global trading with a large amount of users who use mobile apps and a web application to generate a lot of transactions, but also a lot of activities and web events. We need to combine this together to support uh, their business. But in addition, think about blockchain data is the foundation for the movement from Web 2.0 to Web 3.0. What I mean by that is think about a smart contract and autonomous data generation and all these you know, protocols, cryptocurrency, thousands of them, and they're generating the data in a decentralized way. And the Coinbase does not only generate part of this blockchain data, but also need to gather the entire ecosystem data together and then combine them and put them into feature, index, and uh, you know, analytic data set so that we can use that to power our products to offer better insights for our customers. Let me just walk you through a little bit of the journey of the history of our architecture. Coinbase started with Redshift. Around 2019, we switched to Snowflake, and at that time, Primarily, we have a daily batch and with a very few hourly jobs for critical tables. And this is where we introduce the, you know, Databricks into the landscape. We have Kafka with all the change data capture, and we can leverage continuous ingestion on top of a Delta Lake with structured streaming. This enables us to have the data much faster, and we can power a lot of hourly process. And in addition, we added the table replication service. This is really focused on providing business continuity and agility. Think about that. We can migrate, evaluate a single machine learning pipeline use case using a table replication service so that we can bring the necessary data set or tables between data lake and uh, uh, Snowflake so that we can migrate them one at a time. In addition, we also leverage the structure streaming and the Delta Lake to power our blockchain as a service at near real time. We can generate a lot of variety of graph, time series, and key value pair with very low latency to power our business. Going forward, we would like to really reduce the traditional ETL footprint right, and add more and more low latency, near real-time metrics monitoring, and all the application. And uh, with today's announcement of Photon, that we are also ready to move more and more BI workload to um, the lake house. So let me break down all this journey into three solution aspects next. One is ETL, machine learning, and the blockchain. Here we go. So with Kafka, change data capture, structure streaming, and the Delta working together, it's a much better solution compared with the traditional query-based ETL process, because you no longer have to ask your upstream uh, system to add one more index to upscale their capacity. You can get the data fast and easy. And this enables us to capture a lot of vital business metrics with very low latency. We can respond to you know, production monitoring, upsell opportunity much more quickly. And let's also talk about you know, machine learning beyond SQL. Traditionally, we have to heavily rely on SQL 
to do machine learning, we have to export a whole lot of uh, data out of a snowflake so that we can run them in Python library. And now, with table replication service, we can get all the necessary data set to Delta Lake first and then allow PySpark to read them at scale using the map reduce style so that you can not only get the things done very fast, but you can also even save money. And then, needless to mention, Databricks notebooks become the best collaboration place for our data scientists, our machine learning engineers, for them to iterate on their model, feature generation, and uh, share the data visualization together. The third area is the most interesting and unique part for Coinbase. We all know that blockchain data were generated in the public fashion, but in a very distributed way. But rarely any companies are thinking about blockchain data from the analytical perspective. And uh, it is also evolving very fast, right? There are hundreds of uh, cryptocurrency, different protocol, and uh, evolving uh, marketplace. How do we keep up with all this you know, evolving technology? Databricks actually offers the open standard allow us to quickly integrate with all the Python and Java library that we can decode and uh, interact with the blockchain. And its you know, streaming technology allow us to process them with low uh, latency. But in addition, its powerful batch process can allow us to do backfill very quickly. Traditionally, uh, for Ethereum, we need to take like uh, maybe 20 days to backfill them. But now, with Spark, we can do it within 45 minutes to backfill the entire history of Ethereum. This is a kind of like unprecedented speed and agility we could never enjoy without, you know, Data Lake House. And with uh, uh, Delta sharing, we can also easily share this augmented, enriched data set outside Coinbase with the whole industry and, uh, you know, and even make monetize on this one. So, of course, every journey has some lessons learned. Let me just uh, summarize that in three categories. Number one, please let Databricks help you handle the infrastructure so your data team can focus more on you know, product features and building higher level frameworks. Second, uh, don't underestimate the complexity when you deal with SaaS integration because there's still a lot of caveats you need to deal with. So please allow your internal security team, network teams have a direct working relationship with Databricks together to sort out all the firewall rules, security policy, and uh, you know, integration configuration. As data is the most valuable asset for most of the you know, uh, internet companies, and we don't want to put them into rest during you know, uh, migration or technical switch. That's why it is essential to build data replication and migration tools so that even though you're in the transition period, you can always keep your business running and make the most out of the data. This is especially important for the companies who have to embrace multiple computation engine and with ever-evolving architecture. All right. Let me conclude my presentation with a little bit of future perspective. Right now, we're in the position with a hybrid data warehouse plus a lake house. So we are focusing on three things. The number one is increase or improve the developer experience, particularly for how do we educate more people to embrace uh, streaming processing, transition from pure SQL workload to hybrid of a PySpark and a SQL together, and then the second one is interoperability between Delta Lake format uh, with Snowflakes, because we still have a lot of data need to be shared between two systems. The third one is, for, of course, continue to migrate more and more machine learning workload to Delta Lake, because this is a bread and butter. And what is coming uh, is pretty much in two areas. The first one 
is the BI workload. With the photon available, and we want to really figure out what is the best data modeling that works really well with photon. And the second one is we're going to push the boundary for blockchain data processing. And because blockchain has its unique data type, high precision data, highly nested binary structure, and we want to get the most you know, speed and uh, reliability out of the Spark ecosystem. And we would like to you know, uh, publish all these high speed functions with uh, the community. And uh, when we look down the road for two to three years, we see that all our ML workload will be running on top of a lake house from a feature generation to core metrics and for all the near real-time application. But also, we will see all the streaming and the more and more batch will be handled by the Delta Lake with a combination of a structure streaming. With that, thank you very much and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.